Masterpieces are outstanding creations worthy of a place in history. They are the works of art we can't stop thinking and talking about. Art's meant to make a difference. These are pieces that continue to do so long after the artist is gone. I'm Lady K Flo. This is where I give you my quick takes on art pieces I call the masters. Amédée David, The Comte de Pasteuret, by Ingrace. Introducing Amédée David, The Comte de Pasteuret. The painter, Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingrace, was a student of Jacques-Louis David. It's funny, because 35 years before this portrait, David did one with Amédée in it. He was the baby in Madame de Pasteuret and her son. There were no signs of the man he'd become from his tiny presence in that painting. In contrast, this portrait shows us the man. We see how he stands with impudent verticality. He seems to hold himself upright thanks to self-importance rather than an actual spine. The Count also appears to squeeze himself in at the waist with hands encircling both sides as if holding himself together. Ingrace was already an esteemed painter when called on by Amadie to paint this. In fact, the Count was a big fan and collected the painter's works. But Ingrace also knew of Amadie's wretched reputation. Well known and avoided for his pompous pretensions, the Count had only one true fan, himself. It must have been quite humbling to paint such a man at his request. Still, Humility was likely the best attitude with which to paint him. Forced to create with great precision only what he sees before him, in grace captured the real count. Viewers notice first that Amadie David, the Count de Posture, wears a Legion of Honor cross. How could they not? Its white, gold, and red gleam on the otherwise dark background. This is how Ingrace shows us what's most important to Amadie. The cross signifies status. That's this subject's top priority. Setting the bright metal on the somber darkness gives it the appearance of floating in empty space. Ingrace tells us there's little substance behind this symbol. It also emphasizes his sneering, stern face. In grace pleased Amadie David the Comte de Pasteuret with prestigious symbols. He filled the portrait with elite imagery. The white gloves tell us he's a well-bred man about town. There's also a bicorn hat with the gloves, all black. It appears to have two horns, one on each side. These hats were typical for military officers at the time. The Count likely wanted to signal his political interests with the hat. In fact, he supported Napoleon, also known for wearing bicorn hats. There's a scroll beside the hat to represent Amadie's literary skills. He was quite proud of his poetic talent. The finest details in the portrait shine in gold. The medal at his neck appears as real as the expression on his face. On each side of Amadie, he wears a meticulous and functional gold piece. His belt buckle glimmers under his bent left hand, while the glorious swoop of his elaborate golden hilt parallels the Count's stance. He thrusts his hips forward a bit. Not a natural way to stand, but neither are his clingy side hands. The awkward pose makes Amadie look insecure. Combined with a smug face, the posturing makes his gold accessories more significant. The painting is actually about them, not the man. 
It's as if the Count needs accoutrement to convince others that he's worthy. Best part is, they give the painting a compelling story. So, Amadie was right to be insecure. Without his symbolic trinkets, there's little substance. He's all attitude and style. The irony is, this combination might make him a star if he were alive today. The painting Amadie David, the Comte de Pasteure, remains popular. In fact, it has been since Ingres finished it in 1826. Soon after, the painter Edgar Degas bought this painting for his collection. This marks yet another parallel for this artwork. While Ingres was painting this, the Count bought the portrait Jacques-Louis David did of him with his mother, Madame de Pasteure. When a fine artist like Degas buys another artist's work, peons like myself often see this as a validation of our perspective. This need for external confirmation mirrors the Count's insecurity. Still, his gilded props did indeed help make this painting a masterpiece, and Degas buying it helps me make that very same case. Amédie David the Comte de Pasteure, FAQs. Who was Amadie David, the Comte de Pasteure? Politician and poet, Pasteure was born into an aristocratic family during the French Revolution. Unfortunately, he never got off that high horse. It was a bit of a surprise because his mother was rather revolutionary. She started day nurseries for working mothers in France. Madame de Pasteur also had the humbling misfortune of imprisonment. This was with baby Amadie for a short stint during the Reign of Terror, but it certainly did not humble her son. He grew up to become a bureaucrat and then a poet-politician. His reputation remained bombastic, even as he gained stature. Amadie was a comte, count in French, and later a marquis. The Count's art appreciation was so ardent, it might even counterbalance his love for Napoleon. He was especially fond of Ingres and owned seven of his paintings. What kind of painting is Amadie David, the Comte de Pasteur? Ingres studied painting with fellow Frenchman Jacques-Louis David. He considered himself a history painter but most art historians classify this work as neoclassical. That's because Jacques-Louis David holds the primo position as the foremost neoclassical painter. Then, Ingres used the same style as his teacher. Also, this painting is too formal a portrait to qualify as a history painting anyway. It happened a lot to Ingres. He wanted to work primarily in history painting. Still, he was beloved for his splendid portraits. Aristocrats like Amadie David kept him much busier than history ever could. Where can I see the portrait of Amadie David, the Comte de Pasteur by Ingres, in person? This painting graces the mighty Art Institute of Chicago collection. It rounds out their beautiful European paintings and sculpture exhibition. You'll also find the enchanting portrait of his mother in this gallery. Amadie stands stick straight and tall in his portrait. He looks down at viewers in both a literal and figurative sense. Madame de Pasteur gives the opposite impression in her portrait. She meets our gaze with warmth and care. Best part is that although she sits in her portrait, it's more than a foot taller than the painting of her son. The light pink warmth of her picture also contrasts with the dank green chill of the Count's portrayal. Masterpieces are written and recorded by Lady K Flow. If you like this podcast and want to hear more like it, the greatest compliment you can give is to tell a friend. And subscribe to Lady K Flow on Apple, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks.
visit ladykflow.com for all the goods. That's L-A-D-Y-K-F-L-O dot com.